Welcome back. My name is Abdirzak Ali. The president of the federal government of Somalia, Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, has confirmed that recent political agreements made by the National Cons Consultative Council will need to be rat ratified by the parliament. The president's statement comes in response to criticism that some of the proposals made in the, in the agreement were potentially offensive to democracy. President Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud has confirmed that recent political agreements made by the National Consultative Council will need to be ratified by Parliament. The President's statement comes in response to criticism that some of the proposals made in the agreements were potentially offensive to democracy. Speaking at the opening of the third session of the Federal Parliament, President Mahmoud emphasized that Somalia is governed by the rule of law and not by political agreements. The National Consultative Council was established in March 2021 to bring together various political stakeholders in Somalia and facilitate dialogue and cooperation on key issues facing the country. Kasi on Honaya, Mitka Russo Afjari, Jeritaka Kawarita Al Shabab, at the Ali Abu. The Council has been working to develop a framework for upcoming national elections and to address other key political challenges. However, some of the proposals made by the Council have been met with criticism from civil society groups and opposition politicians who argue that they undermine democratic principles. In particular, there has been concern about proposals to limit the number of candidates who can run for public office and to give the president more power to appoint regional governors. President Mahmoud's statement confirms that any political agreements reached by the council will need to be approved by parliament before they can be implemented. This reinforces Somalia's commitment to democratic processes and the rule of law. The president's remarks were made during the opening of the third session of the federal parliament which will focus on a range of issues including electoral reform, security and economic development. The parliament has an important role to play in ensuring that Somalia's political processes are transparent, inclusive and democratic. In what surprised many, former President Mohamed Abdullahi Farmaja welcomed the political proposal. On the other hand, a number of politicians, key among them former President Sheikh Sharif Ahmed and four other premiers, have objected to the move which could see scrapping of the parliamentary model of government in the country. Reporting for Dalsan TV News, I'm Ahmed Abdirashid Noor Gesi. The Prime Minister of the Federal Government of Somalia, Hamza Abdi Barre, has met with traditional elders from the Sol, Sanag and Ain regions. The discussions centered on the ongoing situation in the contested town of Las Anod located in the Seoul region where violence, violence has been underway earlier this year. Prime Minister Hamza Abdibarre met with traditional elders from the Seoul, Sanag and Ain region. The discussion centered on ongoing situation in the contested town of Las Anod, located in the Seoul region, where violence has been underway since earlier this year. During the discussions, Prime Minister Barre listened intently to the intellectuals' viewpoints underlining the critical necessity for peaceful conclusions to the issue. He urged the elders to actively promote peace, unity and stability. The traditional elders expressed gratitude to the federal government for hosting the event and offering a warm welcome. They emphasized the grave humanitarian situation in the Seoul region as a result of the long-running confrontations between Somaliland forces and the militants-linked Dulbahante clan. The meeting with the Premier unfolds just days after the delegation met President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed in Mogadishu. According to anonymous sources, the elders' visit to the capital is primarily intended to discuss the allocation and equal distribution of international help to the conflict-affected region. The federal government is considering promptly transferring relief money to the SSC committee, which represent SSC Katuma regions, a reliable sources told Dalsan TV. The disputed city of Las Anod has been involved in violent confrontations between soldiers of self-proclaimed state of Somaliland and local militias affiliated with the Dobahante clan in the northern Somalia since February 6. Since the beginning of the crisis, 
Los Anot Hospital reported 299 deaths, 1,913 injuries, and over 200,000 displaced people. The recent conflict in northern Somali city has been defined by increasingly polarized irreconcilable narratives about the causes of the fighting. The Somalian administration blames terror groups for instigating violence, while the traditional authorities in Las Anot claim they are defending their community from rising insecurity and fighting for self-determination, legitimated by widespread desire to reunite with Somalia. Somaliland, a self-proclaimed republic with no international recognition, arose as a separate state in 1991 during Somalia's northwestern region's civil war. It extends approximately 137,600 square kilometers along the southern coast Gulf of Aden, a vital marine route between Red Sea and Arabian Sea. It's an important shipping route for petroleum. The SEC claims one-third of that territory. Meanwhile, the Ugandan president, Yuweri Museveni, has signed one of the world's strongest anti-homosexuality laws into law bringing considerable outrage both domestically and internationally. Same-sex relationships were already prohibited in the African country as they are in over 30 other countries in Africa that are banned. Ugandan President Yuweri Museveni has signed one of the world's strongest anti-homosexuality laws into a law, bringing considerable outrage both domestically and internationally. Same-sex relationships were already prohibited in Uganda as they are in over 30 other African countries. But the new law goes considerably further in targeting lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and LGBT. When you carry out acts of homosexuality through force or duress or undue influence, then the law defines that as aggravated homosexuality. And what is the punishment? The maximum punishment is death. It imposes the death penalty for certain behaviors, including having gay intercourse when HIV positive and 20 years sentence for promoting homosexuality. The government of the United Kingdom stated it was appealed, adding that it was adamantly opposed to the death sentence in any circumstances after Western government initially withheld some aid imposed visa restrictions and reduced security cooperation and domestic court. It struck down a less restrictive anti-LGBT law in 2014. Uganda receives billions of dollars in international aid every year and may now face further penalties. The Somali National Army has successfully repelled an Al-Shabaab attack in central Somalia. The assault took place in Masagawa village located in the Galgadud region, according to state media reports. However, no information has been released regarding, regarding the number of casualties resulting from the attack. The Somali National Army has successfully repelled an attack by the Al-Shabaab militant group on one of its bases in the region on Tuesday morning. The assault took place in Masagawa village located in the Galgadud region, according to state media reports. However, no information has been released regarding the number of casualties resulting from the attack. The incident occurred just days after Al-Shabaab targeted a base belonging to Ugandan troops serving under the African Union mission in the lower Shabele region. The AU mission has not revealed the number of casualties resulting from the attack, but stated that it will continue to work closely with the Somali government and other international partners to safeguard the country from the Al-Shabaab and armed groups. Al-Shabaab is an Islamist extremist group that had been fighting to overthrow the Somali government since 2006. The group has been responsible for numerous attacks across Somalia, including suicide bombings, assassinations and ambushes, and has been designated as a terrorist organization by several countries and international organizations. The recent attacks by Al-Shabaab serves as a reminder of the ongoing security challenges facing Somalia, despite progress made by the Somali National Army and its partners. 
the group continues to pose a significant threat to stability in the country. Thank you so much for watching Dalsan TV. My name is Abdul Zak Ali. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>